Yo, uh, just a heads up. This script was written like months ago, so it's gonna be a little outdated. Y y you'll see what I mean. Y you'll, you'll see what I mean. Hello, Internet. Welcome to another mediocre YouTube video starring me and a pair of swords that, after recording footage for this video, now give me a throbbing fucking erection. That's right, FTC. I said fuck. You think this video is intended for children under the age of fuck you? Fuck no. Here at the Den Omega channel, we swear all the goddamn time. You think this video is monetizable? Hell no. Nah. I only have 132 subscribers. I'm not getting monetized for shit. Now that I've gotten demonetized for life, let me introduce you to another concept that YouTube is more than familiar with. Dark Souls boss rankings. That and shouting my opinion into a void. Listen, I know that this idea has been done to death, but A, I like shouting my opinion into the air for no one to care about, and B, I want an excuse to play this game again, even if this playthrough only did last six and a half hours. The cell swords are OP as shit. That's right, I said shit! Alright, we're not doing that same bit twice. Now, while I don't believe any list of opinions should have any ground rules, I do have a sort of mindset I followed in making this list. First, this particular playthrough isn't indicative to the difficulty of the bosses on this list. This playthrough's only two purposes were to A, get footage for said boss ranking, and B, so I could play this game again. Again. Second, my experience alone, between all different builds I've beaten this game with, is what dictates the placements here. Anyone and everyone else's opinions do not sway this list whatsoever. This will be made abundantly clear when we get near the end. I should also note that I've only ever beaten this game once as a mage, and I never want to do it again. I don't care how OP magic can be in any Souls game, unless it's pyromancy, I suck at spellcasting in this game. Now that I got the only two rules out of the way, let's get started with number 5. Wait, the, there's 25 bosses in this game? Number 25, Ancient Wyvern. You'd think with an entrance like this, it'd be a real epic boss fight. But nope, a small stroll through what I assume are the results of a dragon fucking a python. I mean, come on, what am I supposed to say about this one? It's not even a fight. It's like the bed of chaos. You get through some obstacles and then kill the boss with your weapon of choice. Except the bed of chaos is the obstacles are actually hard. <laughs> Bullshit. To the point that you die so much that you end up wanting to take a dip in the lava instead. Hell, I'm pretty sure you could kill the ancient wyvern with your fist. Give that bitch a concussion while you kill him with your Herculean fisting skills. I didn't even try it, so I don't have footage of that, but it's not hard to imagine. Anyway, long story short, the easiest boss fight in the game isn't really even a fight. NEXT! Number 24, High Lord Wolnir. This pick was a weird one for me. Wolnir isn't exactly a boss I can say I really hate, but he is anything but hard. He was boned the moment I touched his cup. Alright, even for me that was bad. I just made a sex joke and a horrible pun into one. And now I'm rhyming too! Fuck! Get me out of this thing! Not quite sure what to say about the Spooky King. Just run up to his dumbass wristbands and wreck his life. You probably won't even notice him attacking you as half of his attacks will be way off target. And he died so quickly he never got the chance to use the attacks that could hit me. He can summon spooky skeletons to attack you, but for as long as I played this game, not once did he ever do that for me. Anyway, uh, the not ancient wyvern levels are bad, still a cakewalk. Number 23, the Deacons of the Deep. You want to know the difference between the Deacons and Wolnir? Well, aside from a lot of things, the Deacons have actually killed me before. Embarrassingly. Did you know that they could curse you? Because I didn't until I tried to play through as a mage. Then again, Pinwheel of all bosses made me rage quit my mage build in Dark Souls 1, so maybe that's not so surprising. As a boss, despite the lack of difficulty, I actually really like this one. You can either plow through the peons like it's a Dynasty Warriors game, which is fun but less effective, or you can dive headfirst into the main guy while getting knocked around by force from every direction. It's so dumb, it's actually kind of enjoyable. The boss itself can't do a whole lot, as it's a glorified basic enemy for the first half of it, and the second half is even easier since now you can do more than a set amount of damage to it. Yet despite all of that, I still like fighting this boss, because it's satisfying and the boss music is actually pretty great. But in terms of difficulty... Ha ha ha... Ha No. Number 22, Yorm the Giant. You're gonna be a dog shit major boss if you're one of the big four before the final boss and rank below the fucking tutorial boss. Oh, you have a really dumb gimmick like the Ancient Wyvern that can end the fight extremely quickly? You know what? No. Fuck that. Fuck the Storm Roller. I'm gonna fight you with my old-fashioned twin swords and oh my god, you can't even hit me. Seriously, what even is this boss? Even without the Storm Roller, this boss is kind of a joke. Sure, I'm not doing a lot of damage, but it doesn't matter when he's doing no damage. I mean, sure, yeah, he got a few licks in while I was fighting him like this, but that was because A, I'm bad at rolling, and B, getting so impatient with him that I started taking extra slashes at him because I knew I'd get away with it by the end. The second phase isn't much different. It's flashier and gives him the ability to- Oh, look, it's Force again! This time it just looks like a giant ring of fire, but operates the same way as before! Cool! Yorm has no right to be a Lord of Cinder. Despite all the flashiness this boss has to offer between the second phase, the Storm Ruler, and even the fucking Onion Knight, it's nowhere near enough to make up for this horrible boss fight. 
Even after beating this boss, I didn't even bother to go back to grab the Storm Roller because I didn't even use it in its one use case. And I didn't think of using it on the Ancient Wyvern as a joke until after I already killed him. Speaking of the Ancient Wyvern, how are you so shit as a boss that I killed you without your gimmick but couldn't do the same to the Ancient Wyvern? That's easy, because without his gimmick, the Ancient Wyvern is an actual fucking threat. You just sit there waving your big ass cleaver around, which admittedly is actually a pretty decent weapon, and do almost fucking nothing! This is probably my least favorite boss in this entire goddamn game. Such a disappointment. The Ancient Wyvern may be easier than you, but he's still way cooler than you, Yorm, you hollow skulled fat bastard. Number 21, Eudex Gundir. Eudex Gundir isn't really a hard boss, but he's not really meant to be. That said, despite being the tutorial boss, he's still not the easiest boss in the game. Hell, he's harder than a Lord of Cinder for fuck's sake, and he started the fight with a fucking sword in his chest and an infection in his spine. Gotta give him props for that, even if that threshold wasn't very high. All that said, while he's not hard, he can still kick your ass if you let him. It sure is tempting to parry bully him, but if you screw it up, say goodbye to most of your health bar. That halberd ain't no joke, whether he or you is using it. Though like if it were a player, parrying that thing isn't super difficult, but messing it up will cause you much grief and a possible point down. Then he turns into a very pussy boy, and my parry instincts fade. The only thing I can say against Udex Gundir is the fact that he's not even the biggest threat in this whole area, and that fact is kinda laughable. But don't worry Gundir, I'll save that skill for your beautiful weapon, you beautiful bastard. Yeah, except not in this playthrough because it's a dex build, but you know, you just don't don't worry. It's gonna be put the great you, 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 the fuck. <laughs> you know, I'm keeping that in. Just here with gun deer, not hard, but a fun fight. We like to go off script here sometimes. Number twenty, the curse rider Greatwood. This is a boss I have mixed feelings about. On one hand, it can be very annoying, but on the other hand, if you follow a sort of pattern, he can actually be taken down pretty easily. Of course, before we get to the second phase, we're gonna have to pop that PUC first, even if you really don't want to. Don't blame me, blame Miyazaki. Next, you want to give it a good ol' handshake, and finally, you drop down and start popping the rest of its gross boils. Start going around to one side of your choice and popping them in a sort of sequence. But I figured out that when you attack the back boils, the boss will almost always lean back to try to crush you, which exposes the boils on its elbow, making them really easy pickings. So in classic Miyazaki fashion, I go behind the tree and start fisting its butthole until it falls over for daddy. I wonder if that's worse than fisting Ludwig's dickhole in Bloodborne. Fighting the boss this way makes it so you don't have to whack at the baby trying to crawl out of the womb. So this fight just got a whole lot easier. If you didn't know about that trick, go wild! Fist the Great Woods butthole till your heart's content. Number 19, the Crystal Sage. Yeah, I think the clip isn't really great at conveying the difficulty of this boss as I kill her before she even gets the chance to go into phase 2. So I'm just gonna explain this one briefly as this clip plays in the background on loop. The Crystal Sage is actually a boss that I don't fuck with too much. I go in and kill her as soon as possible. As clear as that may be. Her clones are a pain in the ass, but despite that, the Crystal Sage is actually fairly frail, so the fight doesn't often last too long. This boss can either go very smoothly or be very rough. You'll either spot the real one quickly or get hit with a barrage of spells that have all whipped me out in seconds before. This attempt went very, very smoothly. Really, I could have let this placement just be the clip itself, but I felt like I needed to justify this placement here. So, uh, I did. Okay, <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> Number 18, Boar of the Boreal Valley. Honestly, this one's interchangeable with the Crystal Sage as I find them just as difficult as her, but for different reasons. Very different reasons. The Crystal Sage can be difficult because of her clones, and Bort can be difficult because it suddenly feels like he's doing his best impression of Gundyr on Ice. <laughs> that said, I actually find this boss to be pretty fun, yet pretty fair for an early game boss for newer players. He's not typically overwhelming, and he's easy to figure out, especially his laser beam. Much like the Great Wood, just get behind his gaping behind and shove your weapon into it. Don't use a fist this time, though. It won't please him enough to spare you. I've tried. Number 17, The Abyss Watchers. Now normally I suck at multi-boss encounters, but considering the frailty of these buddies and the fact that you get a buddy of your own later kind of balances it out. It's also a really fun gimmick that I enjoy, unlike ANOTHER LORD OF CINDER! So after you're done the first phase, the big boy gets covered in the blood of his buddies and then the real fight begins. I almost want to let this boss kill me because he's just so much cooler than I am. I almost don't even have to let him. He can bring out a wombo fuck your dodges combo from hell and immediately end me. And all I'd do is marvel at the beauty of it. He's so majestic that it actually becomes distracting and actually adds to the difficulty. The actual boss fight is still not too hard, but it certainly makes you feel good as hell when you win. Yet also makes me feel sad when it's over. Or you're evil like me and just point down at him and move on with your life. Number 16, the old Demon King. Yeah, old is right. You walk in and he's napping in his I wish was existent rocking chair and you walk out with his pacemaker exploding. Or you die because you either forgot about the explosion, couldn't get away in time, or got stuck in his dysfunctional old dick. I don't have footage of that, but I had a playthrough where that happened several times in a row and I died every time. It was infuriating until it became hilarious. I think it's his love of huge explosions and widespread fire that got him this far. They don't do the most damage, but they can still be very hard to avoid. 
Otherwise, it's nothing special. Just whip it out and spill it out. His blood, I mean. Actually, do demons even have blood? I only ever see them spew out fire or lava when I slash at them. Ah, oh, well, not important. We can move on. Not a whole lot more to say. Just fire and explosions kind of sums it up. Fuck. Fire and explosions kind of sums up this fight enough as it is. Number 15, Osiris the Consumed King. Somehow, at least for me, the first phase of the fight is more difficult, but something about smashing his invisible baby into the ground just makes it easier for me. Good thing he's really easy to stagger, so I was able to just skip most of the fight. Like the Crystal Sage, the fight doesn't normally go as well as this one does for me, but it rarely ever goes poorly for me either. The only reason I have Osiris here over the Demon King is because of the instant charge attack he has I can come out without warning. That said, between the speed of the second phase of this boss and the boss team, I actually really like this fight. It's fun, but even as I typed out the script, I found it difficult to think of any more reason for him to be placed above the old Demon King. Don't have a lot more to say about this one other than... fun. Number 14, Dancer of the Boreal Valley. Would you believe this was once my hardest boss before the DLC? Me neither. See, I had a thing where I wasn't very used to slow bosses. I'd trip myself up with their irregular speed and get punished for it. The Dancer, however, is all about irregular speed. She doesn't follow the same tempo as the other bosses. You can't panic roll away from her, so in order to win, you gotta know how she works that booty and evade accordingly. Once you get that down, she really isn't that bad. What's bad is the room you have to fight her in. It can be tough to get away from her newly found Beyblade habits when a bunch of chairs, pillars, and walls are fucking with your view of that amazing rear ahead. But once you're through the Beyblade attack, just be wary of her tossing you like a salad or doing a second Beyblade attack and you'll be fine. Also, dark damage is your friend. Also, AoE bless. Avoid them. Number 13, Pontiff Sullivan. Minus the booty dancing, the reason this boss is difficult for me is pretty much the same as the dancer's second phase. Irregular moves can attack from either side, but hey, Sully can be parried. Oh hey, I suck at parrying this boss. So I don't even try in this fight, as tempted as it was. That said, this boss is actually easier to pin down than the dancer, but where she fights elegantly, Sully fights like an asshole. Appropriate, given his lore. Things change once he hits his second phase, and they change for the better. For some reason, he thinks that standing still to summon a clone that you can get a few free swings at in the middle of a fight is a good idea. The clone can be a real pain if you let it, but it isn't too hard to kill. Kinda like the Abyss Watcher's fuck buddies. However, in the case of Sully, his clone telegraphs the attack Sully is going to do, so you can use it to your advantage. Uh, assuming you're fucking this one solo. Me though, I just vaporize the clone and the boss together, cause fuck him. That's for Yorshka, you prick. Number 12, Champion's Grave Tender and Grave Tender's Wolf. The first DLC boss of this list. I feel like saying I actually really like this boss would start becoming redundant at this point, because for the rest of this list, I will be listing bosses that I typically really enjoy fighting for the most part. The first half of this fight kind of just starts off with a glorified NPC fight and a couple of wolves. Kind of like fighting the Capra Demon, but enjoyable. Said NPC, however, is using one of my favorite straight swords in the game, if not my absolute favorite, Valor Heart. I find it both fun to use and fun to fight, especially in a mirror match. He switches to spells like a little bitch once his big old bitch shows up, but at that point he's easy to take out now that he's not blocking your attacks. The real fun comes when the wolf shows up. He's a nice normal type with four moves, Extreme Speed, Headbutt, Ice Breath, and Fuck You. Extreme Speed can be easy to dodge if you get the tempo down, and is also very satisfying. Headbutt is a bit slower, so naturally I have a bit of trouble dodging it, and it often causes me to flinch. And Fuck You, because when Ice Breath inevitably lands a critical hit, if you don't heal, have fun running back to the boss fight. All in all, fun boss. Highly recommend it, especially with friends. Number 11, Dragon Slayer Armor. Speaking of fuck you, I hope you like gravity because the Dragon Slayer armor likes to seismic toss your ass off a cliff, but not before using Fake Out making you think he's open only to retaliate and eat half your health bar. All while Dragalgy assists him in a double battle that you weren't prepared for. Don't let this clip fool you, this boss is the true mark of a difficulty spike. And dragon things aside, I find one at that. He has a habit of going into a stance, should you not kill him too fast for him to do it, that can do one of three moves, all of which can really mess up your timing, and either see you chucking Estus or falling straight to hell. He hits hard, but you dodge harder. More often than not, he'll use a basic three-swing combo or a shield bash in place of said three-swing combo just to roll catch you with your pants down. Dragalgy will either use Hyper Beam or Draco Meteor on you, but you can easily avoid it by trying a little. The only real downside of this boss, aside from gravity, is the fact that he chose a really shitty Pokemon to fight by his side. Just keep at him and don't look down and you'll be fine. If you're a Souls Masochist like me, you might even enjoy it. Number 10, Half-Light Spear of the Church. No, I can't believe Half-Light made it this far in this list either. Much to her credit though, she does have a high amount of damage. Coupled with her Ritual Spear and Frayed Blade, she's actually somewhat of a threat. Add a couple of bitches to her harem and, well, they don't really add much to the fight, so uh, 
They can heal her, but you can backstab them. Alright. There isn't too much to say about Half Light. She's an NPC with a boss weapon, a bow that she makes look better than it actually is, and a neat covenant item. Her range, speed, and to a lesser extent, her harem is what puts her above the Dragon Slayer armor. And just barely at that. Nothing too interesting, but nothing too easy either. Also, she can parry you, but much like the people who idolize Fighter PL, she ain't no Fighter PL and tends to fuck it up. I guess Miyazaki wanted to make her as close to a real invader as possible. Punch for accuracy, Mr. Miyazaki. Number 9, Aldrich, Devourer of Gods. It's funny that Aldrich takes the form of Gwendolyn with a poop tail because he teleports like a bitch while pelting with arrows just like him. I mean, I know why it's because he, uh, ate him. Beside the point, fight him a little more and oh look, he's on fire. He really only makes it this high on the list because of his annoyance factor, mostly in his second phase. The homing arrows are annoying but slow and predictable, his floating projectiles are annoying but slow and predictable, his attempts at impaling you and turning you into a shish kebab are slow and predictable, and his life hunt scythe is slow and predictable. And if it hits me one more fucking time, I'm going to uninstall this goddamn game. I can't hate this boss, but he sure is annoying. I've gotten everything else down, but I cannot for the life of me seem to dodge that goddamn scythe, which causes him to heal, which causes him to run away and shoot me more. By the time I've finished fighting this boss, I've already contracted every form of hepatitis in the alphabet. Aldrich is only more difficult to me than the Dragon Slayer armor because with Aldrich, it's a battle of attrition. And your boy ain't patient. Still a far better Lotus Cinder than Yorm. Number 8, Champion Gundir. Much like his tutorial counterpart, he is extremely tempting to parry. And much like Gwyn, if you fuck it up, he's going to nut in your cooter and fly away on his scooter. <laughs> if you can tell me in the comments where I stole that joke, you're getting a heart from me. Anyhow, Champion Gundir is like Eardux Gundir, except without all the stab wounds, spinal infections, and Miyazaki whispering in his ear to go easy on you. The training wheels are off, motherfucker. He is unchained. You want to get past him this time? You better earn it. Much like Gwyn, he is hyper-aggressive and is aiming to fuck your wife. With the abs and moveset of Captain Falcon with a halberd, he doesn't need to deal the most damage to send your ass back to Firelink Shrine. It's almost insulting that the Hornet Ring is locked behind this boss. His aggressiveness alone is enough to make the spot, but on top of that, he moves so gracefully that it's distracting. As if the Puppet Master himself, Miyazaki, was guiding his every move in a poetic fashion. Of course he can send him straight to parry hell, but much like Gwyn, he seems to be the one thing in the game I can never manage to parry without getting a cooter full of nut. This boss is probably one of my favorite bosses in the game, and was actually the first to kill me during footage collection. I don't know how it lasted that long either. Anyway, GG Gundir, my cooter won't forget you. What a weird way to end number 8. Number 7, King of the Storm and the Nameless King. I wonder how many people are baffled by the fact that I put the Nameless King before the Twin Princess. He comes in on this trusty steed, or whatever the flying equivalent is, and immediately starts destroying you with fire and lightning. The first phase can be tricky to dodge, and to fail is to lose over half your health bar. Fortunately for you, while the King of the Storm has the firepower of a fire-breathing dinosaur, it has the frailty of a chicken. And when slain, with a tear in his eye, the Nameless King fries that flying dinosaur chicken into his dinner. He plans on having you for dessert. He's fast, hits hard, but also has some slow attacks that I'm pretty sure were only given to him so the player has a chance to recover. He's certainly more honorable than his father, but he doesn't exactly work in his favor. Half the time. Yeah, see, if you don't have this boss on lock, his mismatched timing can really screw you over. The fast attacks hit hard, but the slower ones hit harder. Hell, the only reason I put him at number 7 is because if you hit him enough, you can go in for a repost and tear his dinner right out of his stomach. I'd imagine it'd come out like dino nuggets. Anyway, he hits hard, but not the hardest. In my opinion. But goddamn, if he ain't the coolest. Number 6. Twin Princess, Lothric, and Lorien, aka the Super Wincess Brothers. I know this placement might piss someone off, but again, I swear I have my reasons. This boss is here for aggression alone. Lorien spends so much time on his knees that he is physically incapable of walking towards you. So he opts to teleport around you, forcing you to lock off of him and suddenly have his hot flaming stick in your ass. He doesn't do as much damage to you as a nameless king, physically anyway, but he roll catches you even more than he does, and leaves far less openings. Not a lot of slow moves you can heal on this time, except when Solar Blade takes a turn to charge. And if that wasn't bad enough, when Lorien lies face down once more, his lanky shoulder monkey comes in, performs CPR, and starts flinging spells at you. You'd think getting on someone's back like a stallion when they can't even walk would be a poor combat decision, but no. They've trained for this day. It's not much harder than before. Lorian basically does all the carrying, in more ways than one. It's really the lack of opportunities to heal and the annoying teleports that makes this boss my number six pick over the Nameless King, even if just barely. Best case scenario, you send Lothric back to his sweet home Alabama before he revives Lorian the second time. Thank you, Cell Sword Twin Blades. Windblade, fuck! 
Number 5, Demon Princess, both variants. If it wasn't for the first phase, this boss wouldn't be nearly this high. I've said it several times on stream, and I'll say it again here. I suck at multi-boss encounters. However, if you don't go in aggressively at first like I usually do, things will slowly get easier. Both demons like to switch between their flaming and toxic forms, which gives you ample time to give them a concussion. Getting charged by two big ass demons, who surely look like gargoyles, is ass, so do try to avoid that. I usually go after the one on fire first. Fighting whichever is toxic is usually key, however it won't be long before both gargoyles switch forms, and the one you're fighting becomes a new target. The first one usually goes down to a repost, and it won't be long before the second follows suit. Before you get the chance to go ring the Bell of Awakening, however, the last one you killed gets back up and suddenly you're fighting Satan! If the demon from below gets back up, you'll be dealing with laters, and if the one in pain gets up, you'll be dealing with meteors. Again, at least this demon doesn't give up and die at the end of the boss fight. I don't find either of them harder than the others since you deal with them in a similar fashion. This boss definitely has aggression, this boss definitely has damage, but what this boss has over the previous two is bulk. You'll definitely have your chances to heal. The real question though is will you have enough heals to survive this long yet very fun fight? Also, if you don't stop the meteors and you're too far away to deal with the lasers, consider yourself fucked. Unfortunately for this boss, I fuck harder. Uh, wait. Number 4, Solo Cinder. What a great goddamn final boss. Holy shit. The amount of variations this man has is insane. In his first phase anyway. He can pelt you with magic, he can sever your limbs with a scimitar, he can impale you with what's supposed to be a spear, and can meta your ass with a straight sword, all coupled with the aggression of a god. Literally, in fact, but we'll get to that. Don't let that health bar fool you either, it's a lie. If you're doing this fight with Yuria and the Pale Shade, the boss won't stop and enter his second phase unless you make the final blow, as if to say that only you are worthy. Kinda like Alduin in Skyrim, only this final boss isn't the total joke. And as if it couldn't get any better, once that final blow is made, he enters his second phase. And tears start rolling down your face as you start to hear it. Plin, plin, plon. The flames of his sword start dancing around the battlefield. He begins charging you with the desperation of a fading god. He begins using familiar moves. Moves you've sworn you've seen before. Gwyn. That's right, motherfuckers! Gwyn's back. Kind of. Of course, of all the bosses to be marked my personal hardest non-DLC boss, it's the final one who channels the same energy as Gwyn! It feels a lot more fair fighting him like this, though, to his credit. Probably why this is one of my favorite boss fights in all of gaming. It has the variety to keep it fresh, yet turns into something familiar, yet powerful in the climax. I climax so goddamn hard when I beat him my first time. I was wearing the Dragon Slayer armor then, too. Really great defense and fashion. Highly recommend it. And here we are at the top three. Those last four entries are really hard for me to decide, as they were all pretty close together in my eyes, though to a lesser extent for the Soul Cinder. However, these last three were very easy for me to place. They are undoubtedly worthy of being in the top three of my personal hardest bosses. I had these bosses already placed in the script when I first started on it, which was over six months ago. Probably around eight by the time I actually started reading this. Yeah, I should, uh, I should probably finish writing this then, huh? All right then. It is time to unveil who has coveted the bronze medal of my personal hardest bosses, and that is number three, Darker Dream Deer. What? Okay, let me explain. I know this is typically the most common pick for one's hardest boss, and you probably expected something was up when the Nameless King landed on number seven, but hear me out. I don't know what it is, but I'm really good at fighting big bosses. On top of that, I have never fought a boss as many times as I have Madeer, be it in co-op or because I fucking felt like it. And that is because Dark Eater Madeer is my second favorite boss in the entire game. Even if he roasts my ass like a flying dinosaur chicken, I can never hate this boss. It's, he's just so goddamn epic. I love fighting him even when I lose, which I often do if I'm using a big weapon. Sure, like the Nameless King, the boss can end with a repost to the face, but the amount of time and effort it takes to get there can be unreal. Unless you're using the Wind Blades. But as I said, I'm taking all my experiences into account which will definitely explain my next pick, but we'll get there. I fought this boss so many times. I basically have him downloaded. Madeir may not always kill you via combo, and be thankful that he doesn't. Because when he does kill you, it's because of the raw damage on this boy is absolutely insane. And god forbid you get caught in his laser frenzy, because holy shit. Luckily for me, he did not use it during footage collection. His second phase just adds a couple new attacks to his moveset, and while vicious, won't always come up. This boss, despite having the bronze medal, holds a very special place in my heart. Number two, Sister Frida. All right, now you're totally judging me. Look, as I said before, all experiences count, and with Frida, it's like Madeir in reverse. With Madeir, I sucked with big weapons, and with Frida, I sucked with small ones. 
There's a dick joke in there somewhere, but I didn't struggle not to say the Nameless King was riding a giant dino cock for nothing, alright? And yes, I get it. Difficulty is subjective, but most people would say Dark Eater Madeira is harder than Sister Frida. At least according to the minimal research I did on the matter. And I almost agreed, if it weren't for one major thing. You may have noticed that in all of the footage you've seen so far, that I fought all the bosses without a single NPC summon. While it was more so to have the footage more focused on me fighting the bosses, it was because for this list, I didn't want to add summons in as a factor. But for this fight, I had to. In order to fit the recording session in one stream, in order not to rage quit my stream while fighting Sister Frida with one of my worst weapons for her, I did it. I summoned Gale for this fight. Granted, the third phase was the problem. The first two weren't too bad, especially the second, since I had a big old man whose life support I could sever, but Black Flame Frida was just too much for my Windblade's antics. On top of that, she's definitely faster than Madeir, and while not quite at the same level, she still does a metric fuck ton of damage. Don't get me wrong, this fight is still very fun for me, but it's definitely one of the hardest I'll ever have. And you know what? Sister Frida is worthy of the silver medal. She's kicked my ass time and time again. Madeir may outclass her in damage, but she has the speed, the aggression, and enough damage on her own to make up for it, and then some. Thanks, Gale. Couldn't have done it without you. You, uh... Hey, where, where'd he go? Oh. I see. Let him grant death. Number one, Slave Knight Gale. That's right, my number one hardest boss of Dark Souls 3, in all my experience, Slave Knight Gale is the winner of the gold medal. Bulk, damage, speed, style, and an overwhelming moveset. In his second and third phases, anyway. And much like Lorian, can even teleport, though Gale is much less of a dick about it. Take what I said about Champion Gundir, the Nameless King, Dark Eater Madeir, Black Flame Frida, and though, to a lesser extent, the soul of motherfucking Cinder, take all of that and put it into one. You have Slave Knight Gale. Miyazaki knew he had to do something really special for the final boss of the entire Soul series, and he delivered. Duck Eater Madeira is easier for me when I use fast weapons, Rita is easier for me when I use slower big boy weapons. But Gale? Gale does not care what weapon I use. Regardless of all else, Gale beats them all, nine times out of ten. Kinda. Of. This is what I look forward to at the end of every playthrough. He may be my hardest boss, but he's also my absolute favorite boss, not only in this game, but in all of gaming. Between him rushing you down with everything he's got and the lightning strikes coming down all around you, this is a final boss worth sitting here at number one. I don't even have any jokes for this one. Gale is just that badass. Okay, wait, I'll still try. Ahem. <clears throat> Having beaten all the bosses in Dark Souls 3 at this point, you think yourself as that big bad wolf ready to come in and slap every inch of Gale's hairy shit, only for Little Red Riding Hood to come in, chop you into bits, and deliver your giblets to Grandma in a basket. You start this encounter with him eating a man, so it's not far out of the realm of possibility. Much like Madeir, I basically have Gale downloaded at this point. He is so fun to fight that it was only a matter of time. And yet, even still, I didn't need a crutch to fight Gale like I did with Freed, or Frida. You know, that bit. So why was he above her in this list? Simply put, she's very susceptible to cheese with anything that staggers and has boys, like the Claymore, and by even more things in her first phase. Not that you need to cheat her first phase. To her credit, I'd put her closer in difficulty with Gale than Madeir, but also keep in mind that I don't totally have her downloaded, so who knows? That could change one day. Unlike Madeir and Gale, I don't fight her over and over for fun, unless I'm using the Fairy and Greatsword. Anime weapon versus anime weapon is great. Highly recommend it. But Gale is, without question, my number one hardest boss in Dark Souls 3. And I don't give a shit if you don't agree with me. It's my fucking list. Fuck you. <laughs> so there you have it. All the Dark Souls 3 bosses ranked from easiest to hardest for me personally. 
I wasn't kidding when I said that it was gonna start getting a little odd by the end, but that's opinions for you. They differ from person to person. This script took more than a few days to write, not counting the days that I forgot about it. Months. I plan on making this video much differently than what you see now, but unfortunately my ambitious attempts at turning my room into a recording studio with a bed didn't exactly work out. So I decided it was time to calm my overambition, so no funny green screen antics. Unfortunate, I know. But I think writing the script and using gameplay footage to make everything flow well is good enough for me. I just want to personally say thank you for putting up with my antics, not just for my inconsistent channel uploads or not upholding my promises that I made even to myself, but also for this video as a whole. I wanted to make this video six months ago. SIX MONTHS! Which is more like eight months now that I'm reading this. I don't know what it is, but I was incapable of working on this script unless it was late at night or at the time of writing, early in the morning, where I have not slept the previous night. I just kept getting a massive wave of anxiety that I don't even understand. I think it was some form of writer's block, but I'm not entirely sure. Still, I want to return to making content, and while not everything's going to be as high effort as this, I still want to produce stuff that's fun. Whether it's talking about fun or otherwise interesting topics, shadow play highlights, or even in some rare cases, things like this. I'm still not 100% sure what the future of my channel holds, but I'm not worried about it anymore. Because at the end of the day, I know I'm going to find something I want to do. And it'll make me happy, and hopefully, it'll make you happy too.